I'm going to unbox to review this new Wi-Fi 7 router by ASUS. This is the Tough Gaming B6500. I'll be doing all my speed test tests using my following Wi-Fi 7 devices. If you happen to have the latest Pixel 10 Pro XL or, or the iPhone 17 Pro Max, these don't go quite as fast as the other two phones, even though these are Wi-Fi 7 devices, so I like to test with the faster phones. Instructions, quick start guides, and things of that nature. Power supply is 100 to 240 volts, and it's 30 watts of power. Comes with an Ethernet cable. It does not specify the category. This router has a very unique look because you can actually place your fingers through here, which is very interesting. Haven't seen one like that before. Actually looks pretty cool. So antenna placement is 90 degrees up and down and about 180 degrees from side to side. And the same is true for the back ones as well. And the reason for that is because you can also wall mount this. So antenna placement can actually make a difference. And so again, that's where the screws would go. Well, this would attach to the screws, I should say. And then you have some vents on the bottom. You also have the rubber feet if you want to just place it on the table. As far as the back, we have the power port, power goes in here. We have four 2.5 gigabit ports. I love the fact that it's four of them. So there is no speed loss at up to 2.5 gigabits. Internet goes here, USB 3.0. If you want to share your external hard drive among the network, don't expect crazy fast speeds from that, but it is possible. You have the WPS button, you have the factory reset right there. I had a chance to play with this thing, set it up as my main router. There were no drops, something abnormal, super easy to set up using the Asus router app, which we'll get into in 8-bit. Had a chance to do all my speed test range tests. I have all those numbers right here. Let's jump straight in, starting with the internet speed test. Now, as you guys already know, when you're accessing the internet, you are limited by your internet speeds, unless, of course, the router itself can't go that fast. So in my case, my internet speeds happen to be five gigs up and down, and this router is only capable of up to 2.5 gigabits. So this router is actually capping my internet speeds to 2.5 gigabits. However, the good thing about this router is all of the ports are 2.5 gigabits. So up to 2.5 gigabit speeds, there is no drop in performance, which is really, really good. And then LAN 1, if I'm pointing to it correctly, LAN 1 is a dedicated gaming port. You can use that just as as a normal port as well, but the gaming port does get some, um, a little bit of priority there. Okay, so when I do a speed test via ethernet, I get just under those 2.5 gigabit speeds. When I do a speed test on Wi-Fi, that's usually a different story. So we got a little above two down and right around two up. So just shy of two gigabits per second upload. Now to find the true performance of this router, I need to do a local speed test. So what I do is I make my computer into the server and I go from Wi-Fi device to router to computer. And this isolates the router because I'm no longer going to the public speed test server, which can be busy at times, nor am I using my ISP, my internet service provider. So this is literally just a straight connection to my computer, do the speed test and I'm good to go. And I've made a separate video on how to set this up. Links below if you guys are interested. I'll also put the product links below as well. So looking at these results, we could see that there is a slight improvement in download speeds. I mean, pretty much the same number, but a bigger difference in the upload speed in terms of the speeds that I got on Wi-Fi. Next, we jump into range test. Now, range will vary drastically by location. So essentially, the more obstructions you have, typically the less range you're going to get, which means, you know, if you're in between floors, a lot of thick walls and other stuff like that, that usually reduces your range. If you're more of an open area, you typically get more range. Now, I happen to be in slightly of more of an open area, so I typically get a little more range. So at 20 feet away inside my place, there is a drop, especially in the download section and the upload, but still getting some solid numbers. And at 50 feet, this is when I'm actually outside my place, and there's another drop here as well but still getting some solid numbers, just right around gigabit speeds at 50 feet away, which is very, very good. And at 100 feet, this is when I'm actually across the street, still getting some very usable numbers. I mean, there's definitely a drop here, but still getting some usable numbers. And this thing can actually go a little bit further than that. I just choose to cap my speed test at 100 feet or right around 30 meters. Next, we get to set up a configuration. And for this, use the ASUS router app. And it kind of walks you through the process of setting it up. And something to keep in mind when you're setting up, it asks you to pick a main Wi-Fi name. Now, what I like to do with these new, newer Wi-Fi 7 ASUS routers is I like to make that a separate Wi-Fi 7 network where I just essentially reserve that just for my super fast devices like the OnePlus 13, like the Galaxy S25 Ultra and other very fast Wi-Fi 7 devices. And then by default, it also makes an Internet of Things Wi-Fi as well and then that's how it creates the network. Now, 
What I like to do is because I enable the Wi-Fi 7, there's a Wi-Fi 7 option in that SSID. I like to enable that just to get the best possible, fastest possible speeds. And I did that when I was testing with this. Then what I do is I make a separate guest network and with that guest network, you actually have the ability to access the internet. So that guest network kind of acts like a normal network. And that's the main network that I can, that's the guest network that I create that essentially becomes the main network for most of my devices to connect to that. And that gives me zero issues with the uh, connections. And then I like to make a separate guest network just for guests without access to the intranet. You can make a kids SSID, Wi-Fi SSID network, which basically means you can actually set a schedule for when the Wi-Fi can be on or off. So if your kids' devices connect to that, you know, let's say bedtime is 8.30, for example, and you want the Wi-Fi to be off at 8.30, well, you can actually set up that Wi-Fi to turn off at 8.30. So it's actually pretty cool that you could do that. And then in addition to that, you can make a VPN SSID. So if you want to go through your VPN, you can set up a VPN within the ASUS router app. And essentially, if you connect to that SSID, you can actually go through there and anything going through there is going through the VPN that you use to set up. Now, I personally use ExpressVPN, so that's how I would use to set that up. And ExpressVPN has nothing to do with ASUS. That is a separate subscription, just as a heads up. And in addition to that, you also get to make a MLO SSID as well and an IoT SSID as well. So there are a number of different SSIDs that you can select and this is just unique to ASUS. Now, some other brands do have some additional options but none have as many options as ASUS when it comes to SSIDs, at least as of, as of now that I can actually think of. They have a lot of stuff included in the price that with some other brands you would actually need to pay for if you chose to use that subscription. So number one being parental controls. They offer a decent number of parental controls that is included in the price. They offer AI protection, so some security suite that's included in the price that gives you additional protections. And yes, they also have a web interface with even more options. By default, when I got this router, when I originally did a speed test, I was getting about a gig down and right around there maybe a little bit above that and I was like why is this seem so slow it should be going faster than this and it turned out I mean I was kind of su suspecting that because some sometimes some routers come like this by default but the 160 megahertz channel width was not enabled on the 5 gigahertz band so I definitely recommend enabling that as soon as I enabled that the internet um, and everything started going much, much faster. To summarize, this is a very good router for internet speeds of up to 2.5 gigabits, especially because you're getting a lot of features included in the price. You're getting that AI protection. You're getting AI mesh compatibility to work with other ASUS routers that have AI mesh to create a mesh network out of them. You're getting those parental controls included in the price. You're getting all those customizable SSIDs. You're getting a USB 3.0 over here that you can actually share an external hard drive on your network. Don't expect crazy fast speeds from that, but that is another possibility. So this thing, and it also has a lot of cooling. So you have it on the top, on the sides, through these vents right here, right here, you have it in the back, and you also have it in the bottom as well. So a lot of cooling as well. So overall, a very good router considering its price. So with that, thank you guys for watching. Smash the subscribe button and I'll catch you guys in the next one.